So if you follow me on Instagram, it's probably because you like my photography. And if you like my photography, one of the things most people like about my photography is my unique lighting and how I use light within the photos. Because my lighting is a little bit unique, one of the most commonly asked questions I get is how I actually achieve the looks that I do. More particularly, how I achieve the light rays within my photos. Because if you're familiar with my work, you know that I like using light rays inside of my photos because I feel like it adds a little bit of depth to the image and it just makes the image look more ethereal, which is what I'm always trying to achieve whenever I take photos. So because people ask me this question all the time, I might as well make a video on it so I can just refer people to this video. So without further ado, let me show you guys how I get light rays inside of my photos. Before we start this video, as always, make sure you're subscribed and you like this video. It really does help this channel grow. And I've been growing steadily for the last month, which is awesome, I'd love to see it. We just broke 2,000 subscribers. So thank you to each and every one of you that actually subscribes and enjoys these videos. Seeing that you guys enjoy these videos makes me want to make more videos. And as always, if you guys have any questions or video suggestions, leave them in the comments below or shoot me a DM on Instagram. I reply to as many people as I can. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start this video. I'm going to be breaking down the technique into three different parts. The first part is the equipment. The second part is how to actually shoot the model with the setup. And then the third part is going to be the post-processing and the editing. Each part works together to make the image the final image. So you definitely don't want to skip any parts. So don't go fast forwarding through the video and end up missing a bit of information that's going to help you out. Let's go ahead and get started with the equipment. Before I start, I want to let you guys know that anything I talk about in the video as well as the rest of my gear will be linked in the description below. So if you guys ever wonder what I use, I have everything that I use linked in the description as well as the gear that I'm about to talk about. So probably the most important thing that you need to purchase in order to achieve this look is going to be a smoke machine. The model of smoke machine that I use is the DJ VF 1300 watt. It's a really powerful smoke machine. Just like a couple of seconds of this thing on gets an entire room completely hazy. Obviously you don't need to go out and buy the most expensive smoke machine you can get away with using a cheaper one. So in the description, I'll go ahead and link the one that I use and then also just a cheaper alternative for those of you who want to experiment with this technique but don't want to pour too much money into it. The first bit of equipment that you need is a smoke machine. The second thing you need is a diffusion filter. I've talked about diffusion filters in the past and why I use them. Um, I actually have a diffusion filter on right now. I have the Prism Dream FX right now. Um, I will be doing some more photo shoots comparing the Prism and the Tiffin that I've been using for a long time. So shout out to the people over at Prism FX for sending me over a couple of filters to try. The reason you need a diffusion filter is because with this technique, you're gonna be shooting into backlit lighting, which is going to introduce really bright highlights and then contrast that with very dark shadows. If you don't use a diffusion filter, it's going to look very sharp and very digital. And, and in my opinion, I just don't think it looks that good without a diffusion filter. The diffusion filter is definitely gonna tie everything together because it's gonna make the highlight roll off into the shadows a lot smoother and make it look less digital. As always, I always recommend that Tiffin Pro Mists. Um, another option is obviously the Dream Effects. I've been using this lately and I absolutely love it. It's a little bit less intense than the Tiffins, um, but the Tiffins, you can obviously buy different strengths. So the ones I've been using for the longest time has been the Tiffin 1 4th Pro Mist. And from time to time, I also use the Tiffin 1 half Pro Mist. And the filter that I have on right now is the Dream FX filter by Prism FX. Point is, you wanna have diffusion when you're trying to achieve this look. So now that you got your equipment, you can go ahead and set up your shots. Obviously, like all lighting, position of the light is going to make a big difference. So I'm gonna throw up a diagram on the screen right now to show you guys what works best for this kind of look. When you're shooting this look, you definitely wanna to aim to get a backlit subject because when you're backlighting it, it's gonna create shadows that's gonna be a lot more apparent than if you were lighting it from the front. When you're lighting it from the front, you're not gonna be able to see those shadows because you're shooting into the darkness. When you're shooting into the highlights, all of the highlights are gonna go from that really bright source into the dark and you'll actually be able to see that. So position of the light matters the most. Having it right behind the model is probably the best and easiest way to get good photos, but if you wanna experiment, you can have it slightly off camera in the back, but it just has to be backlit. So 
definitely make sure that you have a space that can accommodate that because I know with backlighting, it can be a little tricky sometimes. So when you're shooting backlit, you definitely want to try and shoot against a dark background because there's a chance you might see the light stand behind the model if you're shooting with a light backdrop and that'll obviously ruin the photo. Shoot against a black backdrop and shoot backlit. And because you're shooting backlit, the model themselves are going to be very, very dark, so you're gonna need a second light. So the way that I set up the second light is I set it in front of the model. Obviously you want the second light to be a little bit dimmer so it doesn't overpower the backlit light because you gotta keep in mind, you do have a lot of fog in the atmosphere and the more light you introduce, the more the fog is going to actually reflect that light. So if you have too much lighting, it's actually going to ruin the image. That's something that you have to keep in mind when you're selecting what light source you're going to use. As long as you follow the diagram that I threw up on the screen or something similar to that, you'll be okay and you'll be able to get the lighting in the right position. So now that you've taken your photos, the last thing you need to do is edit them. Now, obviously you don't have to do this final step, but in my opinion, it really does help bring the overall image together. Like I mentioned earlier, the photos you're gonna be taking are gonna be very, very high contrast, meaning the highlights are gonna be very, very bright and the shadows are gonna be very, very dark. So when you're editing them, I like to try and reduce the contrast a little bit and bring both the highlights down and the shadows up a little bit. So the last part of this process and this la the last thing that ties this entire image together is when I bring it into Photoshop, I duplicate the layers, I make the top layer a Gaussian blur, I bring it to 60 and then I drop the opacity to about 25 to 50% and I set the blending layer to lighten. This is gonna give it that pro mist effect on top of the actual pro mist. And in my opinion, it just makes the entire photo look a lot more dreamy. So it's a very, very, very subtle addition to the photo. But in my opinion, it's something that if you miss, it's definitely going to show. That is how you achieve my look. That is how you can get this kind of lighting. Obviously I'm making these videos so that you guys have something else to add to your toolbox. As always, you wanna make sure that you're not just copying other people um, and trying to copy their style. You wanna you know, create your own style with the tools that you learn from the other creators. So now that I've showed you guys how I do this, um, go and try it out and put your own twist to it. But but don't just go and like straight up copy it. So thank you guys for watching. As always, make sure to subscribe and like, it really does help this channel grow. If you guys aren't following me on social media, go ahead and follow me. All my social media is at Moody Darkroom. If you guys wanna support me even more, go to my website and pick up some prints of my work. I'll be updating my print shop with some new photos pretty soon. Um, and for the entire month of December, if you use code Moody, you get 10% off your final purchase for any purchase over $20. And as always, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I try and reply to as many people as possible. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one.